Hi guys, welcome to the next part of the tutorial. Before I get started, I thought I would just run down what we've already covered. So now we have adjusted our settings. We've created our custom menus. We have created our page shells and we've changed the basic elements of our design. So you'll see that on this page, we've got our favicon, our new site title. Um, we've customized this primary navigation menu. We've changed the title of the site. We've put in some content carriers here, which look pretty basic and we've changed the footer. So it's pretty basic what we've done. And this part of the tutorial is also a basic setup. We're going to set up the primary sidebar and the primary sidebar doesn't appear on the home page, although you can set it up for it to do that. But this is the primary sidebar here on the right. And we're going to customize that in this tutorial so that our sidebar then applies to all of our pages. So it will apply to my blog page, my tutorial page and my podcast page. So to do that, we just need to travel over to the dashboard here, hit the design tab on the left hand side and we want to go into content areas. Okay, so this is where you can customize all of the content areas, mainly for your home page, but it also allows you to adjust the settings for your primary sidebar. And if you want a secondary sidebar, you can do that too. So over on the left hand side here is the widgets that you can add to all of these content areas. So you know from when we customize our home page that our right side of our header had our custom menu on it and it had our simple social icons on it because we put those together. They're what appeared over here on the right hand side. You know that our home top had the phrase achieve the absurd and then it had our button start here. So this is these are the content areas primarily for the home page but also the primary sidebar which didn't appear on our home page you can add content to that and that will appear throughout your other pages on your site. To add a content type to the content areas, all you need to do is click on one of these widgets. So archives, calendars, categories, custom menu, etc., all the way down. And you click on it, hold it in and drag it over. So if I clicked on this and dragged it over to the primary sidebar, a dotted window would appear and you could drop it into there. So that would create a forms widget. So a form under in your primary sidebar. I won't have that on mine, but the secondary sidebar for my site will be inactive. I don't think you need a secondary sidebar. You may do, but I, I don't need one for my site. So I'm happy for the primary sidebar, which will appear over here on the right hand side, as I showed you before. So I'll go ahead now and customize my primary sidebar and you can go ahead and do it with me. I'm going to start by deleting all of the ones that are already here because I'm going to add my own and I think it's better to add new ones and customize ones that are already there unless they suit exactly what you need. And the first thing that I'm going to add to my site, which I think is important to have prominent all over your site, is a newsletter opt-in form. You've heard me talk about this before and most internet marketers these days say that the money's in the email list. That's your best port of making sales, and but also more importantly, building an audience, an audience and connecting with your audience. It's a really important tool that you should have and I think it's more important to have it really prominently displayed in a sidebar. So fortunately we have our opt-in form content. We wrote that as part of our content. So I'll just go over to our content creation document and I'll scroll down to where I've got my opt-in form content. Here we go. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it again so the title there, straight in, text before the form. And as I spoke about in the content, uh, the content creation part of the tutorial, and it might become a bit clearer now. So they invite you to add the text to show before your form or above the form. 
So above the please enter your name, please enter your email address, those input boxes, this is the content that will appear above that. So I've got mine here. I'll copy that and paste it over and the text to show after your form and I'll copy that and put that in there. So as you can see, again, this process of having your content creation document already filled with the content content that you'll need for your site makes the process that much quicker. Could you imagine if you got to this point and then realized that you had to write this content? It, it may take half an hour at the moment and you know that pro that stopping of the momentum of you building your site you might go away to try to write it and then you know you might get distracted and then you don't come back to the site for another two days well you've only got 14 days with the rainmaker trial so that's why it's important to have all this content there and ready to go um, i'm not going to worry about the google or feed burner id the form action i am just going to put in a hashtag at the moment and i'll show you how to integrate this with MailChimp in a later tutorial in one of the last ones we do but for the moment you can just put hashtags in all of these fields I won't put one in the hidden field this prompts you to request that the confirmation page is open in the same window and I'm going to do that just to make it easier these input Boxes you can change, so the box will have, you know, first name in there. You can change that to say something like, give us your first name, enter your last name, what's your email address, anything you want, but I'm just going to leave them as standard. So once you've finished that, you've just got to press save. There'll be a little circular dotted symbol that shows that it's saving, and then once that goes away, it's loaded. We'll just go and have a look at what the site looks like. I'll open up a new link in a new tab here so that we don't lose this page. Okay, so this will take us to the home page. We need to go to either our blog or one of the other pages to see the changes to the sidebar. So there we go. That's a pretty basic standard looking thing. I'm gonna make a couple of changes to this. You don't have to make them if you don't want to or you can make others if you feel necessary. The changes that I'm gonna make uh, obviously my title here is too long. I think you want the title to fit on one line. Secondly, I like horizontal bars above and below my most of my titles or headings and that type of thing. So I'm going to put horizontal bars above and below here. I want my text to stand out a bit more so I'm going to change that to white at the moment. It's kind of an off grey colour. I want all of the text here to be white and I want my nice big stop sign photo to appear here so that it catches people's attention. At the moment, there's nothing on here that really grabs people's attention. I'm trying with the stop and the exclamation mark and all the exclamation marks, but nothing does it as well as a nice big photo. So those are the changes that I'm gonna to make to this and I'll show you how I would go about doing them. So we'll come back here to our content areas and the first thing I'm going to do is the horizontal bars. Now, I don't think that Rainmaker allows you to enter horizontal bars in the title input space. So I'm going to take this title out of here. So I'll cut that out of there and I'll actually put it in the body text here. The other thing that I need to do is cut this down. Now, as you can see, stop download your DH hiking pack is probably too big I think it's too big for the word download so I've got to cut that down the stop the word stop I kind of use to grab people's attentions but when I have my photo up there I won't need it as much so I might get rid of that so I'm gonna get rid of stop and download and I'll just put in get so get your DRH hiking pack to enter in horizontal bars it is this combination of characters here so that's, that will give you a horizontal bar above this text. And to give a horizontal bar below this text, you just add these. The next thing I'm going to do is change the color of my text. So to change the font color, if you were to go to Google and type in font color HTML, I use the W3 schools. 
it's a really good research w3schools.com it's really good for html and css and you know javascript php sql jquery so use this as a resource so here they've got to customize html text you use this attribute here i'm going to copy and paste all of this so i'll copy that and i'll place that I'll place that after the H, the first HR, because I want that HR to be first. Now, you can see here that I've got font color equals red, this is some text, and then the ending attribute. I'm gonna change firstly this red to white, so that the font color is then white. I'm going to delete this is some text out of here, and I'm gonna place all of the content that I wanna be white in this box, which is basically all of it. So I'll delete this, font ending thing and I'll bring my title back up. So now I've got a horizontal bar here. I've designated that all of the text after this is to be white. I've started that text here with my title. I've put another horizontal bar here. I'm continuing the text. So I've opened up the text to be white here. I haven't closed that off yet. So all of this text will remain white until I put the closing font attribute here. So this attribute with the opening tag has no slash there the closing tag has a slash here so horizontal bar open the white text horizontal bar close the white text I'm gonna repeat the white text so I'll copy and paste the change of white font color here I'll add it so that opens up all of this font to be white and then I'll finish it off here so that process will add the horizontal bars and change the color of the text to white. 